Hi guys. So I'm um, continuing my explorations into mortality, death rates uh, attributed to COVID in um, care homes in this country. So we're looking at uh, England and Wales primarily. Okay. Um, so and I've got some interesting insights to to share. The first one is so this is data that's come directly from the Office of National Statistics and it's specifically deaths involving COVID-19, which means COVID-19 features on the death certificate. Doesn't necessarily mean there's a positive test, um, I don't think. It could also be that um, the, the uh, person who died exhibited symptoms that were you know, consistent uh, with the disease. Um, so the, the really weird thing, is, as I've already posted, is that these deaths it, were in the hundreds, around 500 a week, f peaking at 540, um, and, but have since collapsed down for the last three weeks to under 50 per week. And not only is it under 50 per week, but if you look at the black line on this, this uh, bar chart here, the, uh, the black line represents overall deaths in care homes in England and Wales. So in fact, for the last few weeks, at least the well, last couple of weeks for which we've got data, this is only up to mid-June, um, overall deaths have actually been significantly, noticeably lower than um, than the average. Okay, so you put this into I've I've imported this into a, a Google spreadsheet, and um, this is this is basically the the same graph. And what I was interested in is is the the idea that well, if let's say it's um, it's killed off. So it's killed off about maybe 10% in total um, of the normal uh, UK nursing home population, which I got from a um, Oxford University Press uh, publication as well. So what I've done is I've taken these numbers and I've converted it. Um, so I've, I've added another column that says this is the population of the nursing homes, assuming... Um, so basically, we're starting at 354,306, which is the best figure I could find. Okay, but it's it's fairly irrelevant what number you you start from, um, but it, it's going to be around that that kind of order of magnitude. Um, and then I'm we're taking away all deaths, right? So every death, um, we're assuming that everyone who's died in a nursing home um, leaves an empty room and that no, no new residents arrive to replace them, okay? So this is looking at the, the potential explanation that um, you know, people have died off, therefore there are fewer people in the nursing homes, therefore um, there's less uh, com communication, less contact between people, and it's, it's, it, this, this is what we see, right? So um, we're looking at the, the overall population, so you can see that from the period, uh, in fact, it's, it's pretty ridiculous because I'm, I'm starting in, um, no, 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 this is okay, this is okay, um, 2019, so this is December 2019, so this is basically the whole of the year so far, and you can see that there've been no, um, no COVID deaths until recorded mid-March, right? So what I've done is in the, the yellow column here, we're assuming that um, the nursing home population is decreasing when we take away total deaths each week, okay, and that no new residents are arriving. And then we're looking in the blue column. This is the number of COVID deaths, deaths attributed to COVID as a percentage of the current population, assuming that nobody else turns up in the nursing homes to replace those who've passed, okay. And this is this is the graph that we see. It's, it starts very, very small because the numbers start small. Um, so we've got, yeah, numbers are starting five, one, five, eight, you know, single figures for a few weeks, and then, then it quickly ramps up. Okay, so we reach this peak in mid-April of 0 0.18 of nursing home residents. So, you know, that's less than one in 500 um, nursing home residents in the whole of England and Wales died that week attributed to COVID. Okay. That I get, you know, that is what epidemics do, right? What you see after that point 
is it drops like a stone. Literally drops like a stone. To the point now where we're looking at each week, we've got 0.02%. That's one in, what, 5,000 of the UK uh, nursing home population is dying with COVID on their death certificate. Now, here's the question. If all these people here have died due to a highly contagious pathogenic virus, right, that causes this, this illness that severely affects people who are uh, weak and frail and, and predominantly old, you know, majority of people who are dying are over 65 by, by a huge margin. Um, if that is the case, why has it stopped? Even if the population has dropped from 350,000 down to 260,000, right? So no one else has gone into the care homes. Everyone who's died has been carried out. It's, it's shocking. It's sad. It's a it's, um, terrible thing, right? But n everyone who's been carried out has left an empty room, okay? E even if that is the case, and there are... So we've gone up down from 350 to 260,000. So let's say, you know, a quarter of the nursing home population has been wiped out. Why has it stopped killing the other people, right? And there are three, I would say, possible arguments. The first one is that the remaining 75% of, of people or whatever are immune, okay? They have developed immunity. Maybe they've been, maybe they had natural immunity or they've been exposed to the alleged coronavirus and they're asymptomatic and they're immune and they're fine, okay? Because they're not dying. You know, these people are not dying of coronavirus, of, of COVID now, okay? So I, argument one is immunity. Argument two is that the um, officials are cooking the books in order to make it look as though um, the the virus is disappearing, the pandemic is over. I mean, that that's what this is saying. This is saying the pandemic is over. You know, this is this is going to hit zero very very soon, according to the government's own uh, bean counters, right? So, but why would the government? Let's assume that they are entirely corrupt. Why would they want to? Um, make it seem as though this pandemic was over when it wasn't, right? Um, it just it just doesn't make sense. And why are they doing that and then at the same time wanting to mandate or at least strongly advise, try and compel the population to wear face masks in enclosed public spaces, so in all shops, etc., right? Which hasn't yet come into force and they want to do that this week, okay? This doesn't make sense. So I, I think we can discount the government cooking the books. And the, the only other argument that remains, other than herd immunity among the, you know, the weak and the frail, so, so you know, it, it kills one in ten of extremely weak, frail people who are in care homes, therefore it's not that, that dangerous. Um, the, the only other argument is that the this wave of deaths, which is now decreasing into a um, a what do you call it oh, the, the wake of the wave, right? So we're now seeing a dip following the wave. The only other argument is that those premature deaths, okay, um, were not caused by a virus, because if it were, the virus would still be killing, and it isn't because we can see it's, it's pretty much stopped, um, but were caused by something else. Um, and the only something else that I can think, because if all other conditions are um, the same in care homes, so the, you know, the food, the access to fresh air, sunlight, the, the amount of care, the number of people who are coming around looking after the residents, etc., will all be more or less the same as it was in um, March, when the lockdown started, and in April, May, June, when we were in full lockdown, right? If that if that's all the same, the, the only other reason I can think of is that it's linked to the a policy 
of withholding medical care from people who are showing severe um, symptoms, not, not necessarily COVID symptoms, but uh, so, you know, what happens is that very often when any time I've been into my local hospital um, and go on to ward when, when I've got like a family member who's who's been ill or, or has, you know, had, had surgery or whatever, um, most of these general wards have a very high proportion of geriatric patients on there. And um, so what, what happens is a lot of these people will be in care homes or they'll be looked after in the community in some way. They, they get ill, so they get you know, chest infection or, or whatever happens, um, you know, heart palpitations. They'll go into hospital, they will get patched up and they'll get sent back to their home, family home or care home. Right? What we believe has happened in the, in the last few months is that that has basically stopped, that hospitals um, were saying, you know, if somebody's displaying various symptoms, it's not safe to bring them into hospital. Um, and so they don't come in, they don't get patched up, and they don't have their life extended, or, you know, they are not basically kept alive for a few more weeks. So this is what I believe is the most rational explanation of this, which is that um, these people who would normally, which is a quite a significant proportion, um, would normally have received keep alive medical care in hospitals, um, did not receive that care, and therefore have died, you might say prematurely, but they've died fairly naturally, but they just haven't been kept alive. Um, and yeah, that's it really. That, that uh, yeah, they, they've died prematurely, so it's it's almost like you know we've um, brought forward a significant number of deaths, like five figures worth of of, of deaths of of old people, and so what I expect to see now from this point is that these these figures will um, it will continue to dip below the average, as as we've seen here. If I go back to to this one. The average uh, deaths, oh, this is like 2019, so 2019 is the, is the purple line here, and total deaths is the, um, the green line. So if I zoom right in on here, let's uh, see how close we can go, okay. So there's the purple line, this is, this is average deaths or deaths last year, and this is deaths, total deaths in 2020, including COVID, right? Down from 334 in this week, down to 300. 304, so it's 30 fewer, 282, 275, 304, okay? So for three out of the last four weeks, overall deaths in nursing homes have been below what they were in the same week uh, of 2019 where we didn't have a pandemic, okay? Um, so if, if that theory is accurate, then we should expect this uh, total deaths line to continue falling below the average because all of those people whose um, passing has been brought forward, let's say, um, aren't there to die in, in the coming few months, okay? So it's, you know, if if it's true, it's extremely tragic. Um, it's, it's caused a lot of upset and a lot of grief and a lot of pain for a lot of families, but... Um, as worrying as that is that it uh, is the possibility that it could be a, um, a policy decision and p potentially even done deliberately in order to create the, um, st to cook the books basically, to come up with statistics to suggest the existence of a uh, fearful pandemic when in fact, um, you know, these deaths cannot be attributed, I don't think, to, to COVID whatsoever. So that's the thing that's worrying me at the moment. If anybody can come up with a better explanation for um, that, that, that you know, explains why these, these deaths um, have dropped from, you know, over 0.15 on a weekly basis to 0 0.02 of the population, I would love to hear it because... Um, Otherwise, I think the, the only rational explanation is one that is extremely worrying. Thanks for listening.